Hey girls, good morning. Sorry we missed yesterday, but it was an exciting time. Because I got to go <clears throat> and uh, visit with my general practitioner doctor for our blood test results. Because um, those that know me and have been following what's been going on, I've been working on healing the body. Because see, when I had the double back fracture, it actually stopped the thyroid. Because what we've learned is that the thyroid is affected directly by the endocrine and the adrenal system. So stress emotionally or physically can actually shut down the endocrine and the adrenal. So we've went about, I refused to take the medications from the doctor and I went to a kinesiologist and went through some testing with him and I've met with him each month now and uh, I am really excited to say that I totally walked away <laughs> and Sorry. Uh, I totally walked away from the pharmaceuticals about two and a half months ago, and I don't suggest you doing that unless you know the consequences of doing that. That makes sense? But they kept saying I had hypertension, and they kept saying that I needed this thyroid. Well, the problem was I did my homework, and I found out once you take thyroid, you don't come off. And I thought that's not an option. I want the body to heal. God designed us to heal. And, of course, the doctor was like, all right, this isn't life-threatening, so I'll let you do that. And I said, that's good, because that's what I was going to do. Um, I'm a little bit stubborn, for those that know me as well. Um, and then I also, she put me on hypertension medication, blood pressure. And I wasn't sure why, because it wasn't high, but she caused so much panic and fear and this is what feeds in perfectly to our topic this week is our mindset. She started planning this fear and panic into my poor husband, saying that if I didn't take this stuff, that I would have a stroke. And we're scratching our head because we're like, nah, it's not that high. But, you know, I watched him. Again, I'm very in tune with what's going on with him and his demeanor. He was scared. He was like, I don't want to lose my wife. I said, fine, I'll take it. Well, I took it for a little bit, and then I realized that it's not doing nothing. My numbers are fine. And so it was really kind of entertaining yesterday as I went in, and <clears throat> she says, actually the nurse, you know, because the nurse greets you, right? You got 10 minutes with your doctor, but three of them are taken by the nurse, right? So she says, so are your medications the same? I said, no, ma'am, they're not. And she says, oh, what's changed? I said, I quit taking it all. And she turned around and, oh, girls, if you would have saw her face, you would have went, can I take a snap of that? That would have been a viral, beautiful picture to, to actually share with people. And she's like, oh, okay. I said, but I'm fine. Don't worry about it. And the doctor came in and she's like looking at numbers and she's like, wow, everything looks great. She says, so how are you doing on the medication? I said, I quit taking it. And she looks at me. And I'm expecting, half expecting her to go off, right? And she turns around and says to me, you know what? I wish more of my patients did what you did. Because what I chose to do, I set my mind to believe that I was going to heal. I knew that God designed our body to heal. But I had to get my mind around that. I had to get out of the mindset of what this world tells us that the world tells us pop a pill. But the problem is you pop that pill and then you need another one to fix what that one's done. And that is worse than what you actually have. It's ludicrous. This is crazy, lunacy, madness at its peak. So, I, you know, when I look at mindset, it's about what we're focusing on and what we're moving, what our thought patterns are. And today we're going to jump into this week because I know we've been talking a lot about the spiritual side. and But if I'm talking about balancing the mind, body, and spirit, we also got to talk about this up top, the brain, our mind. What's going through it? Because our mind is so powerful, girls. It can heal us. It can kill us. It can put us into a depression. It can just give us so much happiness. But what happens is it's a lot of what comes in. So we have two eyes. What are we seeing? 
What are we watching? What are we reading? Okay, so do we choose to go see stuff like, oh, what is it, Fifty Shades Darker? Or do we choose to look at stuff that might be more, and I know this is controversial too, The Shack, I, I think there's Christians that are like, oh my God, there's heresy in there, and there's others saying, no, it's fine. You know what? <clears throat> We're never going to find a medium that everybody agrees on. It's not going to happen. It's like politics. But the basic essentials is what you need to look at. When you're looking at what's coming into you, <coughs> excuse me, what's coming into you, right? So what are we reading? What are we watching? Two ears. What are we listening to? Okay, because all of that, all four of these holes in our head, is all going to come out of one hole out of our mouth. All of this up here, the ears and the eyes, is going to control what happens in here. You know, if we go, and girls, if we go and see these things, like Fifty Shades Darker, or whatever other garbage movie is out there, and I'm going to call it garbage, because you know what that stuff is? Do you know what these movies are that come out? What these sitcoms are that are degrading to the family, to the marriage? That's all about Satan desensitizing us so that we think it's normal. And unless you know what the Word of God tells you, girls, you're going to fall into that. And some would say, well, it's not my fault. Well, it is your fault if you fall into the lies of the enemy if you're not in the Word. If you don't know what the Bible tells you, if you don't know what the truth is, it is your fault. Because, see, we get so busy about our stuff and our focus that we miss the key component. So let's take a look at Scripture today because we want to develop a mindset that is going to help you thrive as a woman of God. You know, and I know there's mindset being used out there as that woo-woo, law of attraction, garbage. Talking to the universe, right? We don't talk to the universe. The universe is something that God created, period. And if I've just offended you, and you're a Christian, read the Bible. Genesis. God created it. It is not something that is a supreme being that we can all worship. We worship God alone, a living God, not the universe. So what are we putting our mind to? What are we focusing on? Who are we seeking? Do we know the truth? Do we invest as much time in our relationship with Jesus Christ as you do planning your vacation, as you do planning your week, getting your kids to sports? Seriously. Are we planning to set our minds on the thing of God, things of God? And most of the time the answer is no. And that needs to change, girls. Because see, our days... The days are going to get harder and harder spiritually for those that follow Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible tells us. It's not something that Robin made up. The Bible tells us, girls, that these days are coming. And if you're not prepared, you will be like a sinking ship, taken on water, and you can't sustain that way. So let's take a look at Colossians 3, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You know, when we think about that, we look at where 
is most of our thoughts? Where is most of our mindset? Are we living each day trying to figure out how do I better serve a living God? You know, we talk about what goes on in our head. And do you realize that your mind is the first place, the first place that Satan will go to attack you? Do you realize that? I want you to think about that for a moment. Because if our mind is not absorbed with the Word of God and the things of God, how easy is it for us to get caught up in all of this crap that's on TV, all this crap in the movie theaters, thinking it's real? Thinking that is normal. This is the way life should be. I remember years ago when, I don't know if soap operas are still like the big thing or not. I don't know. But I don't even know what's still on. Maybe General Hospital. But I remember women that I would be around that would always talk. And I was, I was in the home health care. And I was their um, office manager. And the nurses would always come in and the PTs would come in talking about I don't even know, Peyton Place, I don't know, girls. Um, I don't remember the names. All my children, that's one of them. And talking about how, what is it, Erica Kane? I think that's the right name, Erica Kane, would live her life all glamorous and all this other, this romance and everything else that was going on in there. And they compared their lives to what was on the television. Or as one of the nurses who was British on the telly. Okay, but seriously. That is not reality. This that we live is reality. The house is dirty. The laundry needs to be done. There's dishes in the sink. Dinner might burn. And the kids might crap their pants. I don't know. That's real life. And if we're trying to live our life according to what the TV is telling us. Our minds aren't focused on the things of God. The other thing is, our minds can't be focused on the things of God if we're not in the Word. If we're not in fellowship. If we don't spend time with God, we can't have our minds on the things of heaven. You know, there's another scripture here. And it's Matthew eleven twelve. And Jesus said, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. The people who are forcibly grabbing hold of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, are the ones moving forward in it. Now, if we're supposed to be storing up our treasures for heaven, then we need to change our focus. Our mind needs to be set on the goal, the end of the race. All this other stuff is little journeys and little steps to get there. But our focus needs to be on Jesus Christ. And see, what we know is that as we start putting our mind on the things of God, Satan attacks. He does. He attacks us. And he puts things in your head. You know, my monkey, I think you can see him. He's right, uh, right there. Okay, that's my monkey chatter, right? So when Satan starts playing these head games with me and telling me I'm not enough, you know, what are you doing? Nobody wants to listen to you. This is stupid. Don't say that. You might offend someone. Oh, the stuff he says is lunacy, right? But what he does with that is he says that to what? Seek, kill, and destroy. To derail you from the focus of the kingdom of heaven. A woman of God that's going to thrive cannot be derailed. She must keep her eyes focused. And while she does that, she builds accountability around her. So that when Satan throws, and I'm not saying if he does, when Satan throws doubts, fears, worldly thoughts into her head, she's got a support system around her that can lift her up 
and encourage her and say, my dear friend, this is what it's about. Now, there's many of you that don't want that accountability. It's so much easier to go home and hide than to plug in. I've seen that a lot. I see people that flock into church on Sundays and then they leave immediately and never plug into people. Or they might say hi to folks, but then they're gone. And then you never see them the rest of the week. Why? Because we're busy, probably. But are we busy about the things of God? Or are we so consumed with our stuff that we're not finding that time? So our minds are distracted easily when Satan starts to throw these doubts and these fears and these worldly thoughts at us. Girls, if you're not plugged in and you're not accountable, it is so easy for the enemy to get in there and attack. All he's got to do is discourage you just a little bit. And you'll stop. You'll back off. You go into isolation. You'll go with the flow. You'll be satisfied with being mediocre. I'm saved. That's good enough. Is it good enough? Are you truly happy being mediocre as a woman of God? Or do you really want to thrive? That's the bottom line question. What do you want? Some of you may be content at sitting at home, watching the soap operas, filling your mind with that crap, and then going into a depression because your life isn't mirroring what you're seeing on TV. Obviously, my husband isn't the right one because he's not romancing me. Where does that come from, girls? That's all fantasy. That's not real. What's real is what you make it in your home. As women, we are the pivotal point in our home. Our mood, our mindset, our attitude, our actions set the tone for our home. What tone are you setting in your home today? Does your husband look forward to coming home? Or is he like, oh my gosh, I've got to go home to her again, nag, nag, nag. What does he come home to? Does your husband, does your children see Jesus Christ oozing out of you? Do they see the love of Christ in your eyes, in your words? We are the pivotal point in our home to determine the mood, the attitude, and what flows out of this house. So if you're sucking on lemons, girls, then your whole house will be. Your house will be a, a tense, uncomfortable situation where you just can't wait to get to bed because if you get to bed, you go to sleep and forget it all. That's not thriving, girls. That is surviving. God wants more for you. Paul said, set your hearts on things above. And he's referring to God and the kingdom of God. In the Lord's Prayer, we are taught to be consumed with God's name, being hallowed, and his kingdom and his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. That's out of Matthew 6, 9-10. The believer's mind should be consumed with heavenly things. We know that when we're consumed with heavenly things, when we do the best we can to focus on what God's plan would be, there's tremendous blessings. And we see that in Isaiah 26, 3. He says to us, You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. In the English Standard Version on here, and I like this too, it, um, Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed on you. How amazing is that, girls? Do you see how easy God has made this for us? Mindset is not something that's hard. It's just hard to shift what we do. Because a lot of times we may not want to. We may be, oh, this is fine. Let's just keep going. But my question to you, 
Are you truly okay with being mediocre? Just getting by, surviving? That's not a place I want to be in my life. Accountability. You want to have other women of God around you. You have to find a way. Whether it's going to a Bible study, whether it's being part of a virtual virtual mentoring group, whatever it may be, girls, you've got to have a support system because we can't do this alone. I wish sometimes that God would just come down and sit down on my porch with me in the rocker. I'll pour you some coffee and let's just hang out and talk. But you know what's amazing? God does that for us. If we'll just stop our busyness and put our mind on heaven. Sometimes it's hard to do because we get going so fast. The wheels are spinning so fast. We don't know how to stop. That's where we stop. We take a deep breath and say, God, help me to stop and spend more time with you. <clears throat> Philippians 4, 8-9 tells us that we need to think on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy. Because God's peace will be with us if we do. Do you get that? Are your thoughts during the day true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy? What's in your mind? That's all God wants to know. Many are missing that part of our blessings because we've chosen not to focus on heaven. We've chosen not to focus on what God's word tells us here. We've chosen to be so busy about our lives that we're too busy to find time for God. It's a relationship, girls. We must focus on God. We must communicate. We have to be taking this in. Otherwise, if we don't fill the cup, we'll be empty and have nothing. And then our mindset suffers. And then we start looking at depression and isolation and all of this anger, bitterness, fear, doubt. All of that comes in if our mindset, our mind is not in the right place. You know, it's kind of like if I come and I see my new cup. I got to love this. It says Morning Gorgeous. And inside the bottom, I can't tip it. It's confetti in it. It's really cool. But seriously, I can't come and have a cup of coffee if I don't fill the cup. Same thing in your life, girls. You cannot have a blessed life if you're not filling your cup. What is filling your cup today, girls? The things of heaven and God's word? The boob tube? That's what we, we called it. My dad called it growing up. That's the TV for those that are younger. Um, the movies, dirty books. And dirty books meaning that it's all about sex and, and these fantasy relationships out there. Or are you feeling it with the Word of God? Are you feeling it with fellowship with other women who believe in Jesus Christ? Are you feeling it with accountability with sisters who will love you and support you? Remember, girls, we are the core in our home. What is the core putting out to the rest of the home? <clears throat> I've got so much stuff. We're going to be talking mindset all week. There's so much stuff in here that I've pulled up for you guys. Um, I can't possibly fit it into a quick morning thing. But when we talk about... Actually, we'll save that for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about our desires and when we go before God and, and in prayer and, and that whole mindset. But today, let's just focus back on Colossians 3, 1-4. to Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above 
not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Again, set your mind on things above. God says it many times in the Word. What is your mindset? What is your focus? I just, my heart breaks, girls, when I see a woman who's not been focusing on God. And it's not that I'm judging them, but it's evident in the fruit in their life or lack of fruit. Because their life is filled with fear, doubt, worry, just ungodly thoughts. Then they start acting them out. And then they start spewing them out of their mouth. This happens in ministry. This happens out in the markets, wherever you're at, your workplace, your school. And it happens in your home. And I think the home is the one that breaks my heart the most. But again, girls, we are that center point in our home. We have to be working on our mindset. Because your mind is what will put out the words and your actions and your attitude. What does your family say when they come home? Do they feel like your home is a refuge, a safe place to come home, a face of compassion? And yes, girls, we all have bad days. Oh, Lordy, we all know we have bad days. But we need to be able to put our mind back on God. Onto godly things. Onto what his word says. His promises. Fill your head with the promises of God. Not the lies of the enemy. And I promise. Your life will change. You will begin to thrive. Not just survive in this world, girls. But the choice is yours. You choose your priorities. They don't choose you. Whatever you make a priority becomes your priority. Whatever you make your focus becomes your focus. Where are you? I challenge you today, girls, that you go before God and you ask him to reveal how you can change, how you can better your mindset. All of us can do it. All of us need work in there. I'm not perfect here. Even though I'm really aware and in tune with it, I totally blow it sometimes. Maybe it's because I'm not feeling well. Maybe because I've had a bad encounter or a bad client or something has happened. And I forget for that moment that my energy, my, my, I am the center of the house. And if I can't be balanced, my house is not balanced. It's not hard to do, girls. We just have to pick our priorities. What is your priority today? And are you creating a home that is peaceful or one of chaos? Is the enemy planting things into your head of fear, doubt, worry, ungodly things, worldly things? What is going on in your head? Are experiencing depression because you want your life to be like something you saw, something you read. Go back to God, girls, and ask him to reveal it to you. Heavenly Father, I just lift these women up to you today, and I ask, Lord, that you help each one of us with our mindset, that each one of us would identify the areas that we need to work on so that we can be more Christ-centered and focused on you. Father, I pray that if there's women out here that are not accountable, that, Lord, you will quicken their heart, that they will want to plug into something, a women's study, a virtual group, something, to build them up so when they struggle in these areas, Father, that you can put people into their life that are like-minded, that are focused on you, to hold up their arms and help them refocus and come back to you so that they may thrive in their life, Lord. And we just thank you for that. 
All right, girls, there's your challenge for today. You're going to go out, you're going to ask God to tell you, reveal to you what area of your mind you need to focus on. Where are you missing the blessing? Begin today, tonight, when your husband comes home. When your children come home. Begin today being that, that core being in that house that is filled with love, joy, peace. You know where I'm going, the fruits of the Spirit. But it all starts in your mind and in your heart. What will you choose today? All right, girls, more on mindset tomorrow. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, your earthly desires and stuff with your mindset. Okay? Have a great day. And seriously, go before God. Because this is one area of your life that a lot of people become complacent in. And they miss out on so many blessings. I love having my husband come home and want to be here. I love when he leaves for work, he'd rather be here than there. That makes me happy. Even when he goes off to church, he'd rather be here with me. And I say goes off to church because he does the, the sound for the praise band. So he goes in like at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not going to 7. I'll see you there about 8.30, 9 o'clock. So, but uh, yeah, the older we get, the slower we move, right? All right. Love you, girls. Catch you tomorrow. Bye.